A bombshell new book exposes deep financial links between former Vice President Joe Biden's son and the Chinese government. According to an investigation by Clinton Cash author Peter Schweitzer, Biden's son inked a billion dollar deal with a subsidiary of the Bank of China just 10 days after he and his dad visited the country in 2013. Joining me now, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, former strategist to President Trump, now a Fox Business national security strategist. Where's the outrage? Where's the reporting of this? I haven't seen any. Could you imagine if a fraction of this story was alleged against Jared Kushner? I mean, the, the book is just out. Peter Schweitzer and his team did an amazing job on Clinton Cash. But, but in a nutshell, the story is, as you said, the uh, stepson of John Kerry, the son of Joseph Biden, when they were cabinet members of the Obama administration, created a new investment fund called Seneca. They inked a billion dollar deal with the Chinese government, the Bank of China, and then together proceeded, this is just one example, to buy a U.S. manufacturing company called Hennings that was making very sensitive equipment crucial to our, our American military here at home. This, it, uh, look, I, I'm very rarely at a loss for words, Stuart, but this is potentially one of the biggest pay-for-play scandals we have ever seen outside of Uranium One. If they were the sons of Chinese leaders, they would be called princelings, who have notoriously gotten very rich from inside dealings. And now it's the sons of leading American politicians making a great, uh, apparently making billion dollar deals whilst their dad was actively working in the Obama administration. I mean, I can't imagine anything like this before. This is really a bombshell story. It is. And, and as you say, we expect this in a country like China, which only pretends to have a free market and where the, 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 the most impressive, biggest companies in China are always intertwined with the Communist Party, the Politburo and the leading families of the Communist Party. But this is happening in America. And at the same time, not just linked to government, Stuart, this is when John Kerry is ex officio the chairman of the CFIUS committee, which has to approve these deals with communist China. Oh, and by the way, he doesn't recuse himself. They approve this deal with communist China. It, 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 is, it is stunning. You know, before we went on the air, I was talking to you indirectly about this story, and you said you were gobsmacked. Now, I believe that that is a British expression, <laughs> and I'm familiar with it. And, sir, you used it accurately. This is an extraordinary story. I've got to move on. I've got limited time. I've got a lot for you to go at here. If Jeff Sessions, Attorney General Jeff Sessions, does not fire McCabe, and if he does not appoint a second special counsel, should President Trump fire Jeff Sessions? Look, I made a promise to my old boss, the president, that I wasn't going to attack sitting members of his cabinet uh, from outside the building. I'm not going to do so. But at the end of the day, this isn't about one man's pension. This isn't about McCabe's pension. This is about felonies. We have se senior individuals in the U.S. government at the highest levels of the DOJ and FBI that are clearly there, there is, you know, reasonable suspicion that these individuals were involved in felonies such as the illegal surveillance of U.S. citizens. So action has to be taken. I don't care if it's Jeff Sessions. I don't care if it's the president. But we must restore law and order in this country. I, I, I'm not that familiar with the legalism of this. What I am familiar with is the whole idea that there is a cabal operating within the FBI which sought to exonerate and protect Hillary Clinton and do down the incoming president, President Trump. That is an extraordinary situation. To have senior members of a chief law enforcement operation in the United States of America actively working against and undermining an incoming president that's another thing which I've never heard of before, period. Not, not only that, so that in itself is a real blow to the integrity of our way of government. But on, on the flip side, let's look at the backstory to how that FISA warrant was illegally acquired. Hillary Clinton 
financed a Russian propaganda campaign. How do we know that? Because the Steele dossier was knowingly built on false Russian propaganda materials. Uh, Christopher Steele was in contact with Russian agents. She pays millions of dollars for it. And then that oppo research is used to justify the secret surveillance warrant. We've never had a presidential candidate paying millions of dollars for a hit piece in a secret court to spy on Americans. Stuart, if we read this in a Tom Clancy novel, we'd say, this, is, this, is, no, this could never happen, this is absurd. It happened. You know, I think many people are, they're not following this minutely and very closely, but you obviously are, and you just spelled out an extraordinary story. Thank you very much indeed. Sebastian Thanks, Gorka, Stuart. you, sir, are all right. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers indeed.